All right, welcome to another video showcase of the Hoffrey list. This one is in a more balanced high power pod. Um, so uh, again, we didn't win the die roll, but we are sitting to the left of the player who did. Um, we keep this hand because it has Stoneforge Mystic, which fetch us, uh, fetches the Skull Clamp. And if you watch the Goldfish ish video uh, previously, then you know how strong Skull Clamp in this list and why we are willing to run Stoneforge Mystic, even though the only target in the deck is Skull Clamp. Uh, so the play here was just drop the planes. Um, no reason to play Sacred Foundry and take damage if we don't have to yet. Um, although I could have. Uh, next turn is going to be Ancient Tomb, tap, float one colorless, play the Stoneforge Mystic, and then grab the Skull Clamp after that. Um, so the Gerudo player here actually has a pretty fast start uh, with the Jeweled Lotus. I don't know why every time I play against Gerudo they have like a Jeweled Lotus in their opening hand. Uh, it's kind of nuts how fast they're able to <laughs> cast their commander. Um, but yeah, you'll see that we we deal with a good amount of crap this game. Um, so we, we tap, uh, play the Stoneforge Mystic, fetch our Skull Clamp, and then use one floating colorless from the Ancient Tomb to play the Skull Clamp. And then I'm going to go ahead and speed things up a little bit. Um, the Mirren player plays some sort of uh, mana ramp creature. Um, okay, so here is when Garuda initially goes off, plays Jewel Lotus, uh, taps three, plays Garuda. And then um, they're going to hit a pretty strong creature. Uh, I'm not going to talk about my thoughts on how Garuda should be played. Um, but ultimately, they're going to have the option of playing either Spark Double or the Jenga Taxius. And in my opinion, if you're playing Garuda, you actually want to chain off as hard as you can, uh, which I, again leaves you to a board wipe, susceptible to an early board wipe. But you are better off playing the Spark Double and just keep chaining through your deck rather than playing the Jenga Taxius. He chooses to play the Jenga Taxius here. Um, which I believe is actually his mistake. So you'll see him decide that he's going to put Jenga Taxius into play. He draws seven cards. Um, you know, I essentially wait for the discard, and then I end up playing Grasp of Fate to uh, to hose something from all the opponents. And the upside of this situation is that when someone rushes out an early uh, bomb like Jinkataxius, and then you put Grasp of Fate on it. Um, even if you hit a bunch of other players' things with the Jinkataxius, no one actually wants to get rid of your Grasp of Fate because they don't want Jinkataxius coming back, uh, unless they have some other way of getting rid of Jinkataxius immediately after they destroy your Grasp of Fate. And so uh, that is the upside of situations uh, like this, where you know you can hose these creatures that that your opponent might actually want to kill your Grasp of Fate for, but then suddenly they have to deal with the Jenga Taxes. Uh, and so that might cause them to not want to do that. I mean, the other thing I could have done, as you see, is play Vanquish the Horde. Um, however, I don't really like playing Vanquish and killing my Stoneforge Mystic, uh, because, again, with Skull Camp in play, what I want to do is be able to Skull Clamp the Stoneforge and then sacrifice it at some point to draw two cards in order to get value off of it, besides just the fact that it hit fetched me the Skull Clan. And so usually whenever you have a way to deal with problematic threats without using uh, a Wrath, uh, I recommend doing that because a Wrath is like a, a nuclear option. Like the whenever you know you have nothing else left, it's time to Wrath kind of thing. So yeah, Grasp of Fate resolves. Um, it hits, uh, you know, Two mana dorks basically, and uh, the Jenga Toxis, and I use my floating mana to equip Skull Clamp onto Stoneforge Mystic. Um, now, one thing uh, you'll notice is we do lose our our Skull Clamp this game. Um, Jeanette does have the Basaju, uh, and he uses it to uh, hose our Skull Clamp. Um, so I cast Hoffrey, uh, then he Basajus, um, and I get a Plains out of my deck. Yeah, and, and I think that was a good play because it, uh, it allowed me to, or it prevents me from getting value out of the Skull Clamp just because I hadn't played a Sack Outlet yet. And um, one thing I want to comment on really quickly while the Gerudo player is going off is that 
I generally like playing Hoffrey before playing the sack outlets, um, unless the the hand literally has nothing else to do. Like if the if the opponent didn't play anything, and I had no reason to play Grasp of Faith, then yeah, I probably would just drop the altar of dementia and curve it out into Hoffrey rather than playing the Stoneforge Mystic, then Hoffrey, then the sack outlet. But the reason why I like that sequence is that, like I said previously, uh, in in all my other videos is that once you drop a sack outlet, people get wary. They're like, Ooh, you know, especially something like Alter Dimension, that's a combo piece used to combo kill uh, the entire table, uh, which we will eventually do. But people get wary about this sort of stuff. And so um, playing your commander, you know, some commanders are kill on sight. Hoffrey's generally not considered a kill on sight commander. Uh, at least, you know, I mean, you look on EDH rec right now, as of this video, there's less than some, or 1,800 decks of Hoffrey, so like no one even knows what this guy does, or no one even builds him. But we, um, by playing Hoffrey first, uh, we've set up our um, sort of like recursion piece, and then when we drop the altar later, or whatever sacrifice outlet it is, we can immediately get value uh, using Hoffrey. Whereas if we play the sacrifice outlet first, people come after us, like, just because we have a sacrifice outlet and we get into a situation where we may not even want to cast Hoffrey or like casting Hoffrey is awkward um, and the other thing is that Hoffrey costs five so uh, when you do it this way of casting Hoffrey and then your sack outlet you have uh, on the turn that you cast your sack outlet you have mana up whereas if you cast your sack outlet first and then curve in a Hoffrey you might be tapping out just to play Hoffrey and then they're like okay that's you know Hoffrey plus your sack outlet is a little bit too much uh, we're going to start um, interacting with you uh, at that point and so um, that's just something to note is that uh, generally you play Hoffrey before you play your sack outlet unless you have literally nothing else to do um, and here you know the Gerudo player is going to go off um, I, I constantly have to remind him to resolve legend rule before he puts any uh, of like the clone effects in play uh, I'm going to speed this up because it's kind of not going to matter. Uh, yeah, he gets a bunch of uh, bunch of hits. And he chooses Rexiel the Risen Deep. Um, so on our turn, uh, we have two out of three parts of an infinite combo. And I believe he milled the third piece from the graveyard. And so this is the reason why um, I personally uh, have not built a Garuda deck. I may at some points, but decks that just mill our opponents uh, for arbitrary reasons um, tend to give them subtle advantage because now you need to go check everyone's graveyard and be like, what combo pieces got into the graveyard? And putting combo pieces in your opponent's graveyard uh, is actually a negative for you. Unless you can immediately like Bajuka bog the graveyard or otherwise get rid of their graveyard. And so what we see here is we have two combo pieces in hand for one of the win cons, and then the other piece is in the graveyard. But Sun Titan literally fetches out of the graveyard. And on this turn, what I'm essentially contemplating is uh, do I have the mana for Sun Titan and Altar of Dementia? And does this guy have like a one mana counter spell? Um, you know, or does this guy potentially have some way to interact with me? But ultimately, I decide that seven mana is not enough because you can Sun Titan to get another land, but then you can't play Alter Dementia, or you, you could play Alter Dementia, but then you can't do the loop because you'd have to sacrifice Sun Titan to make a copy of Sun Titan with Hoffrey. And if that copy is what attaches the uh, Gift of Immortality, um, it doesn't really work because you can't. You know, tokens, they get exiled the moment they hit the graveyard, so you can't actually loop a spirit token copy of Sun Titan. Uh, you can only loop the original Sun Titan. So, um, I think what I do here is actually just uh, swing at a player um, and then blow up the board. And again, one of the beauties of most of our win cons, at least the, the two primary win cons that you're going to be pursuing in this deck, technically four, because it depends. Uh, it depends on what sack outlet you use. Uh, essentially, we have two infinite loops, and then the win con depends on which uh, sack outlet you use. Um, but uh, one of them being, you know, Alter Dimension, and the other being Combo Bombardment. But the beauty of it is that 
none of these win cons rely on Hoffrey being play. Um, of course, we have other combos that work with Hoffrey, but uh, a lot of people have this conception that if they hose Hoffrey, they hose the deck. And that buys us time, which is exactly what we want. We want to get pressure off of us. Uh, you know, even if we have a sack outlet in play, I've seen people be like, oh, they don't have Hoffrey, so, um, you yeah, know, we can leave them alone for a little bit, which is not generally the case. Um, <laughs> if we have a sack outlet in play, if it's Alter Dementia or Goblin Bombardment, or even Ashnod's Alter, um, we're able to generate value, even without Hoffrey in play, and we're able to uh, lethal the table, even without Hoffrey in play. Um, so, what you're going to see is, um, so the Miram player plays Panel Pan Mark on and passes, very strong effect for Miram. Uh, the Colorless player plays Car and the Great Creator, and that's a problem for us because right now we have Alter Dementia in hand, and that is an artifact. Car and the Great Creator shuts down activated abilities artifacts, so we can't actually use this to win on our next turn, even though we would have the mana to play Sun Titan, grab the Gift of Immortality from a graveyard, and then play the Alter. And so we have to play this a little bit differently. Um, what we end up doing is playing, well, we do telegraph um, that uh, the combo is sort of set up, um, but we don't play the altar and we don't demonstrate that we actually have the combo in hand. So what we end up doing is we play the deafening silence, just uh, make sure there's nothing, you know, nothing particularly silly that the opponents might do on their turns. And then we play Sun Titan, get the gift of immortality attached. Now, most people don't know um, don't see this as too big of a issue. I mean, this is actually pretty nuts uh, if you have a sack outlet, but without the sack outlet in play, people uh, have to know that this is two thirds of a combo to deal with it. But essentially, um, because again, we didn't have a sack outlet in play, and because of Skull Clamp, which was our previous sort of you know, value engine, got hosed, we kind of get left alone here. And that's the, uh, the big downfall, what allows us to win. So we attack with Sun Titan. Um, and because the Garita player had milled our Skyclave Apparition, we're able to recur that and get rid of Karn, which allows us to play the Alter Dementia and mill the whole table. So like, as I said earlier, just milling your opponents actually is giving them subtle value if they have any sort of recursion in the deck. And that milling them for arbitrary reasons uh, is generally not, um, not a very good game plan. Uh, I think we cast Hoffrey here uh, just or no, I think I back out of casting Hoffrey. Um, I think originally I was thinking I had enough mana to cast Hoffrey and the Alter of Dementia, but I think I'm actually one short. So I, I do end up going to attacks with the Sun Titan, uh, recurring the Skyclave Apparition to hose the, the car and the Great Creator, and then uh, casting the Alter of Dementia and milling out the table. And again, if you want to read how that one works, uh, just check out the primer. Uh, I break it down in detail. Yeah, I'll speed this up just a little bit, just so we can kind of um, kind of demonstrate the resolution of it. So I play the Scalding Tarn, and then I play Alter Dementia, and then I essentially ask this Alter Resolve because it's game if it does. Uh, most of these players are tapped out. Um, this guy has no interaction, and uh, yeah, that was pretty much it. So that showcases the game uh, or how this deck functions in a stronger pod where people are playing stacks pieces um, interaction uh, you know hosing stuff like your skull clamp um, and it just goes to show the resiliency and the power of the deck uh, so if you watch the previous video in this one I think you have a good idea of how it, it can be played uh, as well as just how resilient it is in a high level pod in terms of being able to deal with opponent's threats as well as recover after the enemy or opponents have interacted with us. So if you liked um yeah if you like this video or you like the the sort of decks that I make, um I encourage you to subscribe to the channel and uh I look forward to seeing you in the next series where we uh we will probably build um Hen Z Toolbox Tour.